السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل ومن يضلل فلا هدي له واشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الحمد لله عندي لا فريز جيت الله ويفريز هن ونسيك his help and forgiveness we seek refuge in you in you, Ya Allah, from our souls, evils, and our wrongdoings. He whom Allah guides, no one can misguide. And he whom he misguides, no one can guide. Bismillah, welcome to day 24 of the Ramadan series for Halakha Haven. This season is all about reflecting on verses from every juz in the Quran. And as it's day 24, that means we're looking at juz 24. Do they not then reflect on the Qur'an? Had it been from anyone other than Allah, they would have certainly found in it many inconsistencies. Surah An-Nisa, verse 82. And, Do they not then reflect on the Qur'an? Or are there locks upon their hearts? Surah Muhammad, verse 24. These two verses encourage us to reflect on the Qur'an. So let's reflect. So Juzza 24 is concluding Surah Al-Zumar. It's all of Surah Al-Ghafir and some of Fusilat. So for Al-Zumar, we are reflecting on verse 36. Al-Zumar <laughs> Is Allah not sufficient for his servant? Yet, they threaten you with other powerless gods beside him. Whoever Allah leaves to stray will be left with no guide. So, subhanAllah, this is a reminder to us that Allah is sufficient for us. Allah is sufficient for his servant. People might be like, oh, you're only relying on Allah or, oh, you're just turning to Allah for your da'a and not realizing that, yes, Allah is sufficient for us. Allah is hearing our du'as, Allah is hearing our worries, our complaints, our despairs, and Allah is sufficient for us. Now the context for this verse is actually that it's re- it's referring to the Prophet Sallallahu when the idol worshippers were trying to scare the Rasul with their idols and their what they believed were their gods and telling basically like threatening Rasul with these gods, right? And it's a reminder that mm, they can try and threaten, but it's empty threats, right? Allah is sufficient for his servant. And subhanAllah, when I was reflecting through this verse and doing some like research about it, some tafsir had mentioned how this is this verse is actually repl- applicable to our daily, like our lives now. In the fact that sometimes in jobs we have these dilemmas, you can. It's probably very relevant with what's happening in Gaza and how many people have had to speak out against their jobs, against their managers, their bosses, against those who have been with the other side, the wrong side, and basically they've had to face this dilemma of are they going to risk their job to speak out for justice, to speak out for the Palestinians. Or are they going to sit back, right? And so this verse is applicable to where we are right now in life. And it's a reminder that Allah is sufficient for us. Allah will protect us. Allah is the razak, the provider. So we need to stand up. We need to speak out. We need to seek justice with our hands, take action with our tongues if we can't use our hands. And even with our mind and in our hearts as well. So this verse is very applicable to nowadays and it's a reminder that Allah is sufficient for us and people can try and threaten us with police power losing your job losing money but we need to remember that Allah is sufficient for us and just as Allah has provided us with said job said money said whatever Allah can provide it for us when we stand up for the truth inshallah as well okay next verse for reflection from surah al-zumar is verse 42 Allah yatawaffal anfus hina mawtiha wallati lam tamut fi manamiha fayumsiku allati qada alayha almaut wa yursilu alakhra ila ajalin musamma inna fi dhalika la ayatan liqawmin yatafakkarun It is Allah who calls back the souls of people upon their death as well as the souls of the living during their sleep then he keeps those for whom he has ordained death and releases the others until their appointed 
time. Surely in this are signs for people who reflect. SubhanAllah, so this verse is mentioning about how, basically about death, and how sleep is like a mini-death. And in the same verse, it's mentioning, surely in this are signs for people who reflect. SubhanAllah, like if you think about the process of sleeping, it's quite, it's very interesting because it, it's, it's like a mini-death, right? And just reflecting on the process of sleep and how the body just is magical and keeps you alive in a way but like subhanallah just sleep is a very interesting thing and actually regarding this verse i think one important thing to mention to highlight is that abu huraira narrates that the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said when any of you go to his bed he should take the inner part of his waist wrap and dust off his bed with it. So nowadays you use like your hand and just dust the bed. And invoke the name of Allah. For he does not know what followed him onto his bed after him. And then when you intend to sleep, to lie down. You lie down on your right side. And you say, Subhanakallahumma rabbi, bika wa da'atu jambi, wa bika arfa'a wa in amsakta nafsi, faghfir laha wun arsaltaha, tahfadha bi ibadaka. You are supreme, O Allah, my Lord. With you I lay my body down, and with you I rise. If you keep my soul, then forgive it. And if you send it back, then protect it, just as you protect your righteous servants. So subhanAllah, this is a beautiful du'a to recite before you sleep, because as this verse mentions, Allah can call your soul back during your sleep, right? So you go to sleep, and that's it. Like, your soul is taken. And so that's why this dua is very important to recite before you sleep. It's basically asking Allah that, Ya Allah, if you're going to keep my soul, if you're going to take it from my body while I'm sleeping, then please forgive it. <laughs> but if you put my soul back into my body and allow me to live another day, then protect it and then allow me to be of the righteous servants. How beautiful is that dua? SubhanAllah. It's very beautiful, but it's also a reminder that sleep is a mini death. And so we should hold ourselves accountable right before we sleep. Ask Allah for forgiveness for the day if we maybe weren't mindful of him or we strayed or we just weren't in the best of behaviors or characters. And to ask Allah to forgive us for our shortcomings and to protect us if he does give us another day and to allow us to be better. Okay, and the last verses to reflect on for Surah Al-Zumar is 53 and 54. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الْذُنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَاسْلِمُوا لَهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمْ الْعَذَابِ Say, O Prophet, that Allah says, O oh, my servants who have exceeded the limits ex against their souls, do not lose hope in Allah's mercy, for Allah certainly forgives all sins. He is indeed the all-forgiving, most merciful. Turn to your Lord in repentance and fully submit to him before the punishment reaches you, for then you will not be helped. Oof. Two very strong verses. So the first verse is mentioning that Allah is telling the Prophet to tell the servants, us, that those of us who have transgressed, who have gone astray, who have maybe slipped up, made a mistake, done a bad sin, a bad habit, that we shouldn't lose hope in Allah's mercy. <laughs> For Allah certainly forgives all sins. SubhanAllah. How, literally, this is Allah's name, Al-Ghafoor, Al-Rahim. He is the all-forgiving, the most merciful, right? And there's a comfort in this, in knowing that we are going to slip up, right? We are maybe going to be led astray. We are maybe going to make a mistake. But we shouldn't lose hope in Allah's mercy. We should constantly ask for His forgiveness. SubhanAllah. So Allah knows that, knows the sins that we've committed, knows the sins that we're going to commit. And it's an important reminder that while Allah knows that, He's also reminding us in the same line to not lose hope in His mercy, to not lose hope in His forgiveness. For He is the most forgiving the all forgiving the lawful and then the second verse is mentioning to turn to Allah in repentance and fully submit to him before the punishment reaches you right so it's an important reminder that as soon as we notice that we've sinned or we've wronged our souls to repent to Allah to ask for his forgiveness to submit to him to increase acts of worship to bring us closer to him to make us more mindful of him because we don't know when our death is we don't know when 
the punishment is going to reach us, right? And when that punishment arrives, that's it. Like, there's, we won't be helped then. So it's important to repent as soon as we can. Okay, now for Surah Al-Ghafir, we are reflecting on verse 3. غافر الذنب وقابل التوب شديد العقاب ذي الطول لا إله إلا هو إليه المصير The forgiver of sin and acceptor of repentance The severe in punishment and infinite in bounty There is no God worthy of worship except him To him alone is the final return So subhanAllah with this verse there's the mention of غافر الذنب The forgiver of sin The acceptor of repentance وقابل التوب so it's a reminder <laughs> that Allah forgives sins, right? And he also is accepting of your repentance, right? Right? So Allah is forgiving of the sins and he's also accepting your repentance. So there's a comfort in that, in knowing that. And it's mentioned in the Quran, it's mentioned in this verse, right? So Allah is forgiving of sins and accepting of repentance, right? But along the same lines, along the, in the same verse, there's a mention of his severe punishment. Jadid al right? And so it's a reminder that while he is forgiving of sins and accepting of repentance, he also is severe in punishment. And so it's a reminder for us that we can't just simply be, we can't be so like relaxed in our day to day and be like, Ugh, I'll do that act of worship tomorrow. God's forgiving of sins. God accepts my repentance. Like, you take it easy, you sin, and you're like, oh, it's fine, God forgives my sins, God accepts my repentance, right? And we need to remember that there is a punishment, and that if we're constantly transgressing or constantly committing sins and not seeking Allah's forgiveness or seeking his repentance, that there is a severe punishment waiting, right? We are going to return to Allah alone. And subhanAllah, you'll notice this in many verses of the Quran that both attributes of mercy, punishment, um, heaven, hell are often mentioned together so that we, there's that balance, right? Because Islam is all about balance. There's a, there's a reminder that there is hope in Allah, there is mercy, but there also should be fear because of the punishment, right? Okay, and the last two verses or three verses to reflect on from Surah Al-Ghafir are 7 to 9. الَّذِينَ يَحْمِلُونَ الْعَرْشَ وَمَنْ حَوْلَهُ يُسَبِّحُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ وَيُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ وَيُسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ رَحْمَةً وَعَنْ إِمَانٍ فَاغْفِرْ لِلَّذِينَ تَابُوا وَاتَّبِعُوا سَبِيلَكَ وَقِهِمْ عَذَابَ الْجَحِيمِ رَبَّنَا وَادْخِلْهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ عَدْنٍ الَّتِي وَعَدْتَهُمْ وَمَنْ صَلَحَ مِنْ أَبَائِهِمْ وَأَزْوَاجِهِمْ وَذُرِّيَّاتِهِمْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ وَقِهِمْ السَّيِّئَاتِ وَمَنْ تَقِ السَّيِّئَاتِ يَوْمَئِذٍ فَقَدْ رَحِمْتَهُ وَذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ Those angels who carry the throne and those around it glorify the praises of their Lord. Have faith in him and seek forgiveness for the believers. Praying, Our Lord, you encompass everything in your mercy and knowledge. So forgive those who repent and follow your way. And protect them from the torment of the hellfire. Our Lord, admit them into the garden of eternity which you have promised them, along with the righteous among their parents, spouses, and descendants. You alone are truly the Almighty, all wise and protect them from the consequences of their evil deeds. For whoever you protect from the evil of their deeds on the day will have been shown your mercy. That is truly the ultimate triumph. So subhanAllah, these three verses, they are du'as that the angels make, right? So there's a specific group of angels that carry the throne and those around it, glorifying the praises of their Lord, having faith in Allah, and seeking forgiveness for the believers, right? So these angels are seeking forgiveness for believers, saying that Allah, you are all merciful, all knowledgeable, so forgive those who repent and follow your way and protect them from the torment of the hellfire. But then they also ask for the believers to be admitted into the gardens, and they also include the righteous among their families, right? So parents, spouses, descendants, and they ask for believers to be protected from the consequences of their evil deeds subhanallah like this is this is so beautiful right and so the tafsir for this as well was that basically these angels are close to Allah and they pray for their believers they're praying for the believers who specifically repent from the sins 
who follow and worship Allah and the Prophet and they are those who are asking Allah to forgive them, to save them from the punishment of the hellfire and to admit them into the heavens, right? And they also ask for anyone of their family that was righteous to also be admitted into heaven with them, right? So this is important in highlighting that we need to have Iman, we need to have faith to be saved inshallah. Because with Iman, with faith, comes good character, comes good deeds. So I just found these verses very beautiful in just showing us that his angels are also making dua for us as well, subhanAllah. Okay, now for Surat Fusilat, we are just reflecting on three verses that are together, which are 33 to 35. And whose words are better than someone who calls others to Allah, does good, and says, I am truly one of those who submit. Good and evil cannot be equal. Respond to evil with what is best. Then the one you are in a feud with will be like a close friend. But this cannot be attained except by those who are patient and who are truly fortunate. So subhanAllah, this is, uh, these three verses are very beautiful to reflect on. So it's mentioning how we should be those who call others to Allah through our character, through our action, by doing good and by actually saying that we are those. And by saying, I am truly one of those who submit, right? And then it goes by saying to respond to evil with what is best so that the person that you're like fighting with or disagreeing with becomes a close friend. And it then goes on to say that this can't be achieved. You can't actually get that except by having patience. And that is those who are truly fortunate, subhanAllah. So this is a beautiful reminder of how we should respond in situations to actually show the good character that we as Muslims should have, right? So we need to use kind words, be patient, not respond to evil with evil, right? We need to be patient, respond with goodness, with kindness, with compassion. Think about how the Prophet ﷺ would respond to those who attacked him, who disagreed with him, right? And actually the Prophet ﷺ advises us about character to be conscious and mindful of Allah wherever we are, whatever the situation, and to follow up every bad thing with a good thing, so that the good will erase the effects of the bad, and to interact with people in a remarkable and admirable way. Right? So a beautiful reminder. So be mindful of Allah, because when we're mindful of Allah, we, inshallah, will act better, we will behave better, we will be better Muslimin, we will have better character, because we understand that Allah is watching us, Allah is aware of our actions. And if we do slip up, if we do make a mistake, if we do do a bad deed, to follow it up with something good so that the good erases the bad. Subhanallah. Beautiful. Anything I said as a reminder to myself, first and foremost, anything incorrect is for myself and all good is from Allah. So forgive me for my shortcomings. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika shadwuna la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Glory is to you, O Allah, and praises to you. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but you. I seek your forgiveness and repent to you. May Allah protect us from ever relying on anything or anyone else. Protect us from ever taking other things as gods, Ya Allah. Allow us to remember that you, you alone are sufficient for us, Ya Allah. Allow us to stand up in times of oppression and to stand up for what is right, Ya Allah, without fearing the consequences by remembering that you are sufficient for us and you are the provider. Ya Allah, if you decide to take our souls while we are sleeping, then forgive us. But Ya Allah, if you decide to give us back our souls and allow us to live another day, then protect us and allow us to be of the righteous. Ya Allah, we're going to slip up, we're going to make mistakes, we're going to sin. But allow us to never lose hope in your mercy. Allow us to remember that you forgive. You forgive all sins. You are al ghafur Ar-Rahim, the all-forgiving, the most merciful. Allow us to continue to turn to you in repentance and to fully submit to you and protect us from the punishments, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, you are the forgiver of sin and acceptor of repentance. So forgive our sins and accept our repentance and protect us from the punishment which is severe, Ya Allah. 
Ya Allah, allow us to be of those who the angels pray for. Allow us to be the believers, the believers who repent and follow your way. Ya Allah, allow us to be protected from the torment of the hellfire. Allow us to be those who you admit into the gardens of eternity, along with the righteous from our family members. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, continue to guide us and our family members and make us of those who are righteous. Ya Allah, protect us from our evil deeds and from the consequences of our evil deeds. Ya Allah, show us your mercy continuously. Allow us to have hope in your mercy. Allow us to find comfort in your mercy, Ya Allah. And allow us to be of those who call others to you, Ya Allah. Allow us to be of those who do good. Allow us to be of those who truly are from the Muslimin, from those who submit. And allow us to respond to evil with kindness, with compassion, with what is best. And Ya Allah, continue to grant us patience. Ya Allah, allow us to be of the fortunate ones. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.